All right, all right, what's up everybody? It is Thursday. We got another Inside Star Citizen here for us today and I'm already getting messages about this one. Sounds like a good one. It's a sprint report, so we're gonna get a lot of good stuff. If you haven't seen one of these before, uh, I'm Space Tomato, I do things about Star Citizen. I'm gonna just watch this. I'm not really gonna actually react. I'm just gonna try and provide some context if I know something or fill in some blanks or just kind of discuss my thoughts on this stuff. If you care enough, stick around. Maybe you'll enjoy it. Regardless though, let's get started. Let me, let me turn off this music real quick. Get out of here. All right. Okay, where is our episode? Let's see this. I may or may not pause. Welcome to an all Sprint Report edition of Inside Star Citizen. I'm Jared Huckabee, and let's get into it. Wow. Following our look at new derelict concepts a couple weeks ago, members of the environment team have begun the process of building the individual pieces that can be used to bring them to life, starting with the big mammer jammer itself, the Reclaimer. Honestly, I'm very surprised they started so with the Reclaimer. Like, th I was really, really looking forward to a Reclaimer derelict. I didn't think we'd get it for a while. I do hope we get some xenomorphs with it. Sort of like a reverse white box phase, where environment artists take the completed work of ship artists and then begin to break it down, stripping it of all the extraneous parts and then bending and twisting the superstructure in ways appropriate for a wreck that's one, two, or perhaps even 10 years old. What you're seeing here is the beginnings of a, a derelict zoo, as it were creating the buffet of basic forms that designers and other artists will be able to pull from to continue their specific work, building out the various points of interest players can explore on the planets and moons of Stanton, Pyro, and beyond. This is actually, <laughs> it's kind of annoying for two reasons. Well, for one reason, uh, the upcoming supporter exclusive video is all about the history of derelicts. So now I'm gonna have to put this in there, but this is actually really important when they first introduced derelicts, we'll call it T0 back in 2016, uh, they were very adamant on the idea that this doesn't cause extra work because they're already doing the damage pass on all these ships, so they can just pull that out of the damage pass and apply it as a derelict. And that clearly has changed over time into something that requires a little bit more extra work. And in the supporter video that I talk about, which you can get as a Patreon member or a YouTube channel member, um, I kind of look into how like that sort of, I feel like that's kind of scope creep on this particular feature. Um, I think that's a deeper discussion to be had though, but yeah, I, I find this to be a really important point. It's early days and this simple reclaimer derelict zoo will continue to evolve over the coming weeks in addition to many of the others seen in previous concept arts ahead of their systemic implementation into the persistent universe proper. The team is also exploring early advanced traversal opportunities for some of the outlaw space stations currently being built for the Pyro system. I like advanced if you traversal. Remember the most recent CitizenCon demo, advanced traversal are ways to get around or through an environment beyond the critical path most people usually stick to. Traverse. Now by following a variety of indicators still being developed, including simple things like tracing the path of an unusual cable or scratch marks on the floor, the players can discover these advanced traversal paths designed to lead not just to interesting tactical opportunities, but special loot and content rewards for those who spend a little extra time exploring. Totally just gonna chill up As there and scare people. As for everything else you're seeing here, this is still very much a work in progress, with only the earliest of lighting, texture, and prop passes being complete. But it's a neat look at how these stations are pushing not just into new dynamics visually, but a universe of possibility for additional exploration as well. And like with the outposts you saw at CitizenCon, they won't be assembled the same way each and every time. So you can never be too certain what's around any corner. Sorry, I have to pause this. Headphones are about to die. It's just, you know, one of those things. Come on, come on. This usually goes much better. Okay. Members of the environment team also took a sprint to explore something on our backlog, namely the addition of small and medium-sized hangars to the ring structure of some space stations. Oh, those look way better. It's a small touch, 
But these small touches, they add up to make for a more dynamic landing and takeoff experience as players travel across the Star Citizen Persistent I guess universe. Not, not necessarily better, just different. I like them on the inside though. That's cool. It feels a little more, you know, homey. Let's switch gears here. From bounty ah. hunting to mining, from emergency response to race. I was just talking about this yesterday on stream. Racing to espionage and security, as the reputation system continues to grow and expand within Star Citizen, so too must the interface that represents it. To that end, explorations are underway mapping out the representative icons for some of the various mission type career paths currently in development for the Persistent Universe. Now in a recent sprint, icons for several more reputation paths were proposed, including kidnapping, hauling, smuggling, and theft. So the icons are great, but like, you know, what about the actual ones? Now these aren't the full array of possible reputation paths, just a few that the UI team is currently making icons for. It's cool. We'll be covering more about this massive expansion of the reputation system and the various mission types and activities that go along with Next it quarter. as development continues. Uh -huh. Yes, I can already tell that some of you are a little too excited to build your reputation in kidnapping. <laughs> and it bothers me. Smuggling. Meanwhile, the lighting team recently completed a sanity pass on the RSI Mantis cockpit. Now these sanity passes are essential in ensuring the latest tech and process improvements reach assets that were built prior to their implementation. Real serious as well as guy. Keep some of the older stuff just looking as good as the newer. Now this happens on everything. And the Mantis here is just the most recent example of updates that don't just make the visual appearance better than before, but are also more performative and less resource intensive. That's our version of tastes great, less filling. They can also serve as terrific training opportunities. Definitely to looks pass more vibrant. Knowledge from older employees onto our newer hires as the company continues to grow. And speaking of growth, let's take a quick jaunt over to Orison and look at some new executive offices being developed. Now these structures would be placed out on some of the raised landing platforms and provide a small self-contained working area for Orison's bureaucracy, including an elevator down into the inner depths of platforms beneath. Wait. Of course. This is, is this gonna be what their idea of building interiors are on Orison? So like our corp has their buildings and, okay. As for what adventures players may one day find in such an area, I'm not telling. I wonder if this is work from the Montreal team. Since they're working on building interiors, this, I mean, kind of seems like a building interior. Cool stuff, though. It's always great to see that they're going back to landing zones and building stuff in as they go. They're not just forgetting about those, luckily. Mostly because I don't know yet. I missed a meeting. Let's move on to some ship updates with this look at the continuing final art phase of the Vulture from Drake Interplanetary, where you can see all sorts of the smaller details you'd expect to see while unifying some of the scale reads where some items in the back half seem to feel a little more chunky compared to those in the front. Who Who's not excited for this ship? Like, not only is it an awesome looking ship, it's also a Drake ship, and it's like salvage. Holy crap, it's salvage. Finally, and I don't think this ship's going to come out without salvage. And I keep telling people, yes, obviously salvage could get delayed, but it's on the monthly reports, which is which is a good sign. It's pretty much just tightening things up and finishing them off now ahead of salvages intended release later this year. Notice he didn't specify a quarter. Happens, <laughs> we've got the Misk Hull A barreling towards completion at the end of this quarter where its final art pass continues adding all the various decals and decorations you might expect. But disclaimer here, those aren't the correct cargo boxes you're seeing here. The ship didn't just massively increase in size. It's just an artist having a little fun. So... They're also adding the trademark misc turret underneath the cockpit and continuing to refine the expanding and contracting cargo grid for all your shipping needs. That is such useful B-roll. You're gonna see that in so many of my videos, but that's what I wanna know about. 
this ship is scheduled for the end of this quarter to, to finish, but what's going on with the tech? I'd love to hear more. I'm guessing maybe they're waiting until they talk more about the cargo refactor, but they've done a lot of showing us this ship without telling us much about this ship. And it's very curious. I guess they're doing the same with the Vulture. They're really waiting. They're really building the anticipation, I think, on what they want to show for these. Because this is basically, this is the beginning of new professions again, uh, ever since we got mining and kind of with the medical stuff last year a little bit. Now we'll be talking more about the Hull A later this quarter before its intended release in Alpha 317. Of course, in Merchantman news, the team continues white box phase, working through the entirety of the ship's interior in their efforts to fully map it out before going into gray box. You can see some of the main bridge here with the pilot seats up front and the staircase to one of the primary turret rooms above. In white box phase, it's simply about making certain every space has a purpose, has the room for players to achieve that purpose and to do so with the signature organic shapes that have come to identify the Banu thus far. Moving down to engineering, work continues making certain everything is to metric. Now, last time we showed it, wow. the stairs here were getting just a little too pinched, so they've opened up the area a bit, trying to make the whole room feel nice and grand within the confines of the current exterior. Love and the then song. in the habitation area, you can see the beginnings of a Banu shrine that we'll explore more of in the future. This ship's going to be crazy. And then here we have the interior turret area we mentioned before, which is shaping up to be quite different from any other turret you've experienced before. Is that Pacheco? that same sense of scale found throughout other areas of the ship. Jeez, look at this. It's a massive gun. And this massive space that houses it is actually open to the decks below it. Like... This is way, way, way more exotic than any ship in the game so far. I mean, maybe the car to all, but like, and the Defender, those are both really small, so we don't get to see actual interiors on those. This blows everything else out of the water in terms of design. What the heck? This is going to be a crazy ship. Which should make for quite the view before the turret forms down around you and sucks you up into it, raises above the exterior of the ship, and then lets you pew pew to your heart's content. Oh, we all love the pew pew. Yeah, merchantmen people, this one's going to be worth the wait. Wow. <laughs> and finally, before we let you go, we started this week with derelicts and a mention of those colonialism outposts. So let's combine the Ruins? two and look at an initiative the teams undertook to explore outposts of days gone past huh. with these concepts that you can see here. I, I didn't expect now, one that. Of the many projects the team at Turbulent is working on are the systemic tools that will one day bring these to life across the pyro system. But as with all concepts, artists must first explore the ideas further and set the goals for those systems to build towards. And just like the Reclaimer derelicts from before, work has also begun creating the derelict outpost zoo that will one day serve as the basis for hand-placed points of interest first then the systemic implementation still currently in development. No, nope. I'm going to have to do some this this production cycle that they're starting to go through with these things is is nice. And it's cool that they're starting to show us these in bunches instead of showing us just concept art. They're actually showing some of the more, I guess, white boxy kind of stuff. But this is this is interesting. Yes, it is art, but this is interesting because it's showing a little more variety in their points of interest and I thought they would go for this early um as always they're probably like they said just working on the tools to be able to make this stuff fast and in scale later but uh this is definitely out of left field didn't expect this one whether it's brand new or a hundred years old each location is a new opportunity for story and gameplay to be found throughout the upcoming pyro system so what did we learn this week but we learned that the process of making new things old and then new again is well underway with the Reclaimer and Outpost derelicts. That advanced traversal means additional opportunities for loot and storytelling in the outlaw space stations. That the Banu Merchantman continues to make its impressive journey through White Box. And that the reputation system is on the cusp of expanding into a wide variety of legal and not so legal activities. Now, don't forget that Xeno Threat is still underway and Coramore is almost upon us with slick, 
iridescent paints, and hopefully no more Valentine's card contests that I, uh, I have to explain to my mother. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. You know, I gotta say, the, the part at the end there, um, I think it's really good that they're diversifying these points of interest. And it feels like what they're really doing with these spots is they're creating, I guess, kind of like what they did with planets, how they created planets. And then they started to fill in the planets with things like caves and um, outposts and cities and all that stuff. It feels like they're kind of starting to create derelicts, caves, um, ruins and outposts again in this new form and then use those to kind of start to showcase the gameplay that they're going to bring in in the next few years stuff like salvage and cutting and hacking and that kind of stuff so it's cool to see how how quickly they're pushing on that and uh, i'm excited to see what they do with pyro it feels like it's going to be a pretty significant upgrade from stanton anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this um I'm going to start to take these a little more seriously, I guess, and actually put some real discussion in here. But uh, tell me what you think on the comments below. Maybe, you know, you like the, the quicker version, whatever it is. Hope you come to the next one. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Peace out.